that might what the heck I don't know what I just hooked to be honest what is up my dogs lost here it is a stupidly beautiful morning we're once again with the man's Jacob we have a bucket full of live shrimp and we're gonna be sight fishing in super clear water looking for redfish snook black drum bonefish triple tail those type of deals that if we catch anything that's edible it might be going right in the cooler and coming home with us but we're gonna see if we can get on some big fish on live shrimp in some clear water let's go the water is iced out this morning that is 15 feet of water that we're in right now holy crap it is so clear i think we might be able to sight cast some good fish today that is what are we in right now what, what are we in right now 15. 15 man that is insane that is so insane all right we're starting out this morning we got the live shrimp on a little crusher jig just a 1 8 ounce weighted hook this is 25 pound fluoro 15 pound braid 2500 size reel medium light spinning rod and we got crystal clear water that we're trying to sight cast in sun's still a little low for like primo sight casting but the clarity is so unbelievably good that i think today could be ridiculous if we can find the fish so right now we're cruising looking for bones reds snooks black drum whatever Oh, that's really cool. The yellow jack. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. I have never, I don't know if I've ever caught one around here before. That's really neat, man. That's really, really neat. A little yellow jack right there. I think they're not honestly that bad to eat, but we'll, we'll let them fly. That's really neat. Honestly, anything's up for grabs and catching in the area that we're fishing, man. I'm pretty sure whatever this was ate my jig head itself. That is a blue runner. Man, getting the diversity up in here today. Norm normally I'm just like a, a Jack Craval kind of guy. <laughs> Yellow Jack, blue runner. When I'm sight fishing a flat too, one thing that I love, love, love to keep an eye out for, especially when it comes to bonefish, reds, black drum, is stingrays. They will be moving across the flat, kicking up mud, and there will almost always be some type of predatory fish tracking right behind them sometimes laying flat on top of them and uh they're way easier to see obviously than picking out a bonefish that's this big swimming across the flat so if you can see like, a big big old garbage can lid swimming around it can be really really good opportunity to catch a fish that might what the heck i don't know what i just hooked to be honest whatever it was just broke off <laughs> i don't know what that was it might have yeah it popped off it bent out the hook oh the freaking shark no something just ate a shark just ate my freaking thing it's like, it's like a six foot there's like a six foot bull shark right there <laughs> There's a bunch of women paddle boarding, so I'm not yelling about it. No, dude, that was a bull shark to smash what I had on my hook. I think you might have had the shark. It might have been that, but... No, I literally just like saw... Thought. It was like literally like a 90-pound bull shark just swimming underneath the boat. <laughs> I'm just like trying to not be loud about it because there's literally like a group of like four women on paddle boards like 10 feet away from us. <laughs> oh. I either, I think, I, I do think I might have hooked a jack and I think that shark literally might have just crushed that jack. Like right when you hooked Right, it. like right when I hooked it. Like I hooked the jack and the shark just grabbed it instantly. No, the, oh, there it is, swirl again. No, that's, it was literally, it's like a six and a half foot bull shark. I guarantee that shark had a school of like 10 little jacks swimming on top of them like that. And I hooked one of those. And the second I hooked it, the shark just turned and crushed it. Yeah, if I would have foul hooked that shark, like if I would have like caught around him, my line would be super scuffed up. If he would, there's no way a shark that big would have possibly hooked perfectly the corner of the mouth on this tiny of a hook. Yeah. He must have literally like hooked the fish and just must have smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob, I just had a thought. We should keep a tally, like a species counter today. So yellow jack, 
Blue Runner, Jack, Jack Craval. Three species. Three species. Right. Ironically, they're all Jack. I don't think anyone's surprised by that, but we'll see by the end of the day how many different species we've caught. Oh, here comes that freaking shark. Really? Oh my god, and he's got some big freaking fish on him. That's a barracuda. But there is something following that shark, like two big jack or something. But yeah, that was another like 80 pound shark right there. Oh my gosh, look at that eagle ray. Dude, we gotta film that. Let's see, we gotta film that. Look at that eagle ray. There's an absolutely beautiful eagle ray just cruising right along this flat, and there's a sea turtle here too. We'll try to film both of them. God, that's actually going hard. That might be. Oh, that had to be a grouper. That had to be a grouper. Popped off. Yeah. Damn, 100%. There's no way that wasn't a grouper. <laughs> the way that was diving like that. Look at that. Little lane. Beautiful, beautiful snapper. An absolutely tiny little lane, but they are. One of the prettiest fish ever is that little lane snapper. Yep. Mangy. And that is another species of snapper right there, a mangrove. All right, we have elevated here. You would not believe how big of a difference just getting up a foot or so on top of a cooler when you're trying to sight fish can make. You'll see fish. 10 times further out than you were before. I don't know what we got on here. What are we dealing with? That's way up on that mangrove head. Old beefy mangrove snapper. That is a big mangrove snapper. <laughs> Junker. Ooh. I've tied on a gulp shrimp right here. This is a little scented shrimp. I'm like the inverse of most people. <laughs> My patience for throwing live bait can only last for so long until I want to throw artificials, where I think most people are the opposite way around, where they're like, I'll throw artificials for a bit and then I'll switch to live bait. So I'm going to see how this works out and be a little more active instead of passively working a live shrimp. We're going to start doing a lot more casting. What do we got here? A little snook. About time we found a snook. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. All right, sorry. <laughs> He's going nuts. Beautiful little cold water snook. Awesome. I think we've caught now 11 or so species. The goal has been accomplished. We haven't found any really big fish today, unfortunately, but uh, we've caught a lot of different stuff, so it's been cool.